Hi, my name is Cameron Carlson with AnimeLocation.tv. I'm here at OhioCon 2019 with Mr. Jason Marsden. How are you doing? I'm great, Cameron. How are you? I'm so wonderful. Thank you for coming out and enjoying today with us. It was my pleasure. I love it. I'm having a great time. Alrighty. So, how'd you get started in the world of entertainment? I was. Uh, I was. I should have looked at that first. No, I'm. Uh, I was 12. Uh, my uh, parents uh, uh, relocated from Rhode Island to Los Angeles. My dad taught ballet at Fullerton College. And while we were there, everyone's like, oh, your son's so cute, you should get him into acting. And uh, so they took me to a workshop. And the workshop trained me, it was like all ages. Went uh, uh, commercial, TV, theatrical. Did that, they sent me to an agent, agent signed me, and, and uh, fame, and, fame and fortune <laughs> happened. Um, okay, so this is really personal for me. Um, you happen to work on the award-winning and honored film, Spirited Away, it's haiku. Yes. What was it like knowing that that won an award and beat out a Western film production company of Disney, even though it was produced by Disney, but still beat out all of its stuff that it had done that year in, 20, in 2003? Well, let me just be clear that like the, the whole movie won with no thanks to me. I mean, like it was an Academy Award winner before I became part of it. I just did the English translation. It was... I'd never heard of Miyazaki before. I am not, I shouldn't say this, an anime convention. I haven't seen a lot of anime, sorry. I didn't have a cool older brother or friend to like introduce that stuff to me. So uh, when I booked it, it was explained to me like, yeah, you know, this is uh, this movie made, you know, more money than Titanic. Yeah. And uh, Miyazaki is like the Japanese Walt Disney. And I, when I booked it, it was all ADR. I had to dub everything. So I'm only seeing Haku's scenes. Okay. I didn't see the entire movie until like another month later. Wow. And then when I saw it, I was like, I was blown away. And admittedly, because they were like, it's like two hours. I'm like, two hours? Well, I don't have time for, but it was, it just went by so, so fast. It was crazy. Yeah. I, I owned it and, and I love it. And it's, thank you for doing your work in it. I loved it. I did it for you. <laughs> I did it for you, Cameron. Um, and again, uh, you hit my childhood so well. You did Max in the Goofy movie. Um, what's it like giving a real life lesson and message in the movie? You know about loving your dad, growing up, and, and going away, and and you know keeping that bond with him throughout. You know, because obviously Goofy is trying to come to that acceptance and that term that you're going away, but then at the same time you're like, no, no, it's okay, Dad. You can let go, but I'll still always be there as your son. Yeah, it's it. it one thing that he, that I love about having worked on this is, is especially in the concert, it is like I have so many people even today that come up to me and be like man thank you this movie I watch this with my dad or I watch this with my mom and you know we don't get along but we bond over this this movie it, you know it feels outstanding yeah, yeah. Uh, I was gonna say um, you know you also worked on Fairly Odd Parents right. a really fun and wonderful show how is it like to play off Tara Strong and the rest of the cast actually we are friends with Miss Strong uh, we've interviewed her we interviewed her uh, back in 2016 Fantastic. I love me some Tara. I knew her before when she just moved to the States and I was like instantly impressed with her, her talent. We worked on a cartoon together called uh, Extreme Ghostbusters. Okay. And uh, I love how successful she is and I cherish any time I get to work with her. <laughs> Alrighty, and um, now another fun show for uh, fans with children of their own is the Transformers Rescue Bots. Yes. Um, how did you get to voice off a great cast, including uh, our personal friends, Mr. Steve Bloom and DC Douglas? Um, what, what was it like working on that show and putting out fires? Let me tell you, there was no fires to be put out. It was all love. I've never, you ever worked on a, you ever worked on a, <laughs> you're talking about DC? Yeah. Yes. <laughs> Chase. DC is a, I love DC. I'm always going to scream in all my videos. Chase! He is so... It, okay, you ever worked at a job where you get along with everybody so hard, it's like lightning in a bottle, yeah. and you hang out afterwards and you share a text thread? Like, that's how it was. Like, I've done hundreds of cartoons for over 30 years, and I've never worked on a show where everyone... It couldn't be, it couldn't be more of a mixture of people. There was uh, animation veterans like Mo LaMarche and Bloom, animation newbies like DC... Right. Like Amari uh, Williams, like Shannon, like uh, Parv, uh, uh, and we got along so good, and we still like we did four seasons. We still share text thread. Like it was Par Parvesh's birthday, and uh, he's sending pictures of his mom uh, dancing on the. They went to see Conan. They would you know dance on the Conan set and stuff like that. But it's it's outstanding. It's one of my favorite projects to work on because of that. Plus, I'm sorry, my show. Uh, plus, huge Transformers fan, so I was like, it was a thrill to like voice a Transformer, you know, and be part of that that history. 
I say I, I watched uh, a lot of it. I'm more of a Beast Wars guy. Uh, so we've. Hey, we're done here. <laughs> <laughs> I had the chance to meet uh, Scott McNeil, who worked on five characters for that show. Uh, so I was. That's where I picked up Transformers. But I do love the original. I do also love the '80s version as well. Uh, that's, what I, that's what I grew up with. It was my. It was my jam. Well, of course, when you have that legendary voice of Optimus Prime, I mean, come on. Peter Cullen, who also worked on RescueBots. Really? Yeah. Oh, that's right, because he does show up as Optimus from time to time. He does. Yeah, I'd never, I'd never met him until we worked on that. And what are you looking at? I'm Is looking it, at you. You're looking at me? You're looking over here. Is there princesses? What's going on? <laughs> Trying to have a conversation. You're just bored. No, I keep looking at you. So a lot of fans may not know this, that whenever I talk to someone, yes. I look at the mic to the mouth ratio. Okay. You have, a good, you have a good mic, okay. mic voice. All right, thank you. <laughs> That's why I kind of unfortunately like look past you and like, eh. no, it's, it's, I'm looking at you still. Don't worry. All right. Peter Cullen hadn't worked with him before. He came in to do some Optimus Prime, and he, he, he came in separate from all of us. So I knew he was showing up early. I showed up early to meet him. He was like a little taller than me kind of like very soft voice and he gets in the booth and he starts doing Optimus Prime and I tell you I like melted to my 12 year old self I started to get emotional it was it was amazing that's why like I get it when when people come up to me and and they're very excited I I totally understand yeah um, and again this is another personal one for me and my mom because she loves Hocus Pocus yes. and you got to be Brinks the cat yes. uh, what was it like working on that uh, of course you know you're a voicing a puppeted cat yeah. and a real cat at points and of course but you're on set with all three wonderful actresses and actors what was it like just working on that film well first off I have to ask you Cameron you're a virgin no yep well then you can approach the black flame candle that's all I, they eat the witches eat children I have to ask this and very embarrassing question uh, funny I did not book the the uh, the gig until uh, well after production had wrapped yeah, uh, w uh, by coincidence, I was working next door on a TV show while they were shooting it, and I knew Omri Katz from a show that we did when I was 17. So I would go and, and visit him, and I'd try to take a peek at Bette Midler and Sarah Jessica Parker, and I would see, I was there on set, but no, you're not looking over there. That, th what is that? <laughs> Don't worry, I'm looking at you, my friend. <laughs> it gets, so like, in the middle of a con, it gets punchy, you know, like you're here all day, you're talking with people, Okay, I'm back with you. Uh, didn't book it until after uh, production had wrapped. Um, uh, Sean Murray, mm -hmm. who was the uh, human Thackeray Binks at the beginning, he was booked to play the, the human character and voice it. Okay. After production, you know, in movies, like, things change all the time, and they decided, you know, I think Sean was using his own voice. Like, Binks is 300 years old. Colonial Salem, he should have an old world sort of quality. Let's do an audition. I read, I booked it, so I had to go in and loop uh, uh, not just the, the animated cat, but also Sean as well. Oh, really? Yeah. I Interesting. So that was all done by ADR then? Correct. All right. So um, now you're no stranger to video games. You happen to pop up in Skyrim, Final Fantasy, StarCraft, and Fallout, all huge franchises. What's it like to be part of them in some way, shape, or form? Uh, it's a thrill, you know. I mean, uh, I grew up playing video games, and it's, 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 it's fun. It's a hard work. Yeah. Uh, uh, I haven't played it because now I'm like old, and I and I there's too many buttons, so I haven't yeah. played anything I'm in. But you know, I meet a lot of people who get a lot of joy from that, and that makes me happy. Um, I'm a huge StarCraft fan and Blizzard fan. So, oh yeah, I've played all three of the games um, of StarCraft. I've played all the Warcrafts. I've played all of them, plus all the Diablos. So, like, I'm a huge Blizzard fan, so I always love it. And then I've, I just started playing Skyrim and Fallout just recently with the last set. So, I like playing those. Um, so, thank you, again, for, uh, for providing those voices. Yeah, last time I played Warcraft, I think it was the 24-bit, like the... That would be Warcraft 1. Yeah, yeah. yeah, yeah. Which I've actually played that, too. Um, so, oh yeah, it is. So, if you could... All the time you've been in Hollywood, you've been wonderfully working on many, many, many projects over your life. What type of project would you like to perform potentially on stage or live action or voice acting with potentially another actor or just something you've never done that you would love to do? You know, I would like to play superhero. I mean, the superhero movies are in. That'd be fun. We'd wear a costume and do all the things. Um, uh, yeah, I just I just like to act, man. You know, I uh, any opportunity. It's all voiceover or on camera theater on stage it's all just play and imagination and i i want to you know do stuff that to challenge myself you know Alrighty, my friend again where can we keep up with you online and 
<laughs> Where can we keep up with you online? And um, what message would you love to give out to fans that have been keeping up with you throughout your many years? Like I said, I've been watching you since my childhood. So what's it like for those fans that have been keeping up with you? What message would you love to give? Uh, well, I mean, uh, believe in yourselves and, and, you know, don't feel like you're truncated. If you have a passion for something, follow it. It's never too late. Uh, it, it'll, things will never be as dire as you think, you know? And I have a lot of friends who may be stuck in a, in a cubicle job or a desk job, but they have such like artistic creativity that they need to, you know, express. express. Do it, do it. There's nothing holding you back. I mean, you'll always have a roof over your head. You'll always have a support system around you. I guarantee it. Um, and uh, and I'm, I would love if people followed me. And, and I, I'm kind of focusing exclusively on Instagram. That seems to be my, my favorite outlet. So it's at Jason Marsden on Instagram. And uh, if you're really interested if, in stuff I do outside, I live in Nashville, Tennessee. I work with musicians. I produce shows. I produce shows for musicians and comics and whatnot. And, and uh, I'm very proud of that. And uh, if, if you want to be introduced to some like great you know, local indie comedy and, and music and burlesque, follow me at Mars Presents. Okay. Actually, we have several friends in Nashville. Uh, Kaza, the band Kaza is down there. Um, also, uh, Sailor Moon, Jennifer Sihi is down in Nashville. Really? Um, or, yeah, Eric Stewart, yeah. Eric Stewart. Yeah. Stewart. yeah oh, I so, just saw last weekend, yeah. yeah. So, you got plenty of friends that we know down there, too. Dig it, dig it. We'll come by and make sure you look me up when you're there. Alrighty, my friend. Thank you so much for coming and stopping by. Thank you so much again. My pleasure. Thank you, thank you. you. Look how well he turned out. <laughs> this guy.